Welcome to 2019.1, the December update to Autodesk NetFab. What is new and what has changed? Here are the highlights for this release. A number of updates have been made to the UI. The new menu style combines main menu and toolbar from the classic menu. The Home tab contains the most commonly used tools in one place. When you launch NetFab 2019.1 for the first time, you will be asked which menu style to keep, and you can switch between the styles at any time. Another addition is the View Cube. With it, you can control the perspective of the display by clicking its faces, edges and corners, by clicking and dragging, or by choosing from the classic perspectives in its context menu. The dialogues for moving, rotating and scaling have been combined and sorted into the context view. Now you can perform these transformations while keeping the actual part in view. And you can also switch between them conveniently. There's now the Autodesk Control Gizmo you may know from AutoCAD and Fusion 360. It appears whenever you choose any of the three transformation controls. You can click and drag any element of the gizmo to move and rotate apart along, across and around the cardinal axis and planes. Or you can enter numbers into its fields. Lattice Commander has left technology preview. Lattice Commander is one of NetFab's toolsets for defining, generating and post-processing latticing structures. Its mesh generation has been improved and can now also produce volumetric meshes for finite element analysis directly. Additions and improvements to support generation address support removal, strengthening supports and support management. You can now specify to have a gap between wall and interior structures of volume supports to help with removing them after printing. When you have edges supported with polylines, you can instantly add some reinforcement to hold the edge firmly in place. As supporting parts is typically the last step before manufacturing, any rearrangements might invalidate already generated supports. New options help with handling any last minute manipulation, including reverting accidental movement. Sets are for supports what format painters are for office software. Now you can store any numbers of sets, give them names, even import and export them. A new algorithm has been added to bouquet generation. One particular feature is that, as the bar supports get bundled together, their respective cross-sections add up accordingly. Finally, Four new default support scripts have been added to get you started manufacturing quickly. Base plates are a great way to improve not only the additive process itself, but also the post-processing ergonomy. They are more rigid than individual support entities, which makes detaching a finished build from the build plate easier. And they can even form attachment points or firm stands for manual or machining-based follow-up treatments. They can also improve heat sinking. Slicing has received a new view. It graphs the total area occupied by contours across the layers. This is particularly useful when the print job contains multiple parts and you want to identify suboptimal utilization of printing time. Another change now properly ignores parts that have been defined as no build zones when dragging and dropping multiple parts into slicing. There are also a number of smaller changes. Changes to the part export dialog, adding a preset functionality to the Monte Carlo packer, making settings in the blueprint dialog persistent, and adding a debugger to Lua scripting are a few other improvements to life when working with Autodesk NetFab. For a more comprehensive list, visit the online help via the help menu. 
or by navigating to www.autodesk.com slash netfab-help. Have a look at the What's New article and search for 2019.1 to learn more about the changes and improvements. To download the update, find it in your Autodesk account pages or select it in your Autodesk desktop application.